The Lions once again fought to the end in Cleveland last Sunday, but couldn't get the play they needed when they needed it and ended up falling to the Browns. Coming up, our analyst Devin Gardner breaks down the Lions' efforts to see what lessons can be learned and applied moving forward. Head coach Dan Campbell takes a look at the Bears on both sides of the ball to see who presents the biggest threat to his team this week. And linebacker Anthony Pittman shows that you don't have to wait for the holidays to give back to those in need. And as we all get ready to sit around our tables and eat some Thanksgiving dinner, I'm here to provide some pretty interesting facts about the food that'll be on just about everyone's table. Yep, it's a food for thought. Or is it thoughts about food? Anyways, this is a special Thanksgiving edition of Lions Game Plan, and it's served up right now. Lions Game Plan is presented by Comerica Bank. Hi and welcome to another edition of Lions Game Plan. I'm your host, Danny Rogers, and I'm getting ready to celebrate the Thanksgiving holiday with a nice feast. People all over the country will sit at a table just like this on Thursday. However, did you know there's interesting facts behind almost all of the items that will be on your table? Let's start with the main item, the turkey. Right here, we got a couple of nice slices. 46 million of these turkeys will be served on Thanksgiving Day. That's enough to feed 88% of the people in the country. I wonder what the other 12% are having on Thanksgiving Day. The Lions had a high chance of walking away from Cleveland with a win last Sunday. However, the Browns pulled it out. Lions are still looking for that first win. Defensively, we're getting turnovers. Um, which I think is is pretty big, man. Um, you know, to give yourself a chance and to play good defense, you need to get turnovers, which we are. And, uh, you know, I think there again, I just, I think we've got the most amount of uh, rookie play time of anybody in the league, or maybe the second, I don't know what that is, but we're, we're getting invaluable growth and, uh, and experience out of our young guys. And, um, you know, that doesn't certainly, it hasn't shown up in the win column, but but I do feel like these guys are growing. And, uh, and you know, the more investment we're getting now, it'll pay off. Um, and there again, I'm hoping it's it, it'll pay off big before, you know, next season. We're hoping this thing, you know, comes at any time. But, but they keep putting out the effort. They keep working. It's a good core group. And, uh, you know, we just – I bring it up one more time. We just it's, – it's hard for us to overcome one or two mistakes. We have a great coaching staff, and our record doesn't show it, obviously. Uh, people see 0-9, oh, and, and, and they're just like, oh, man. And they're just like, oh, my gosh, the line suck. But, nah, we in every game. We're fighting, and we're competing. And that's just the bottom line. We want to go out there and compete and give it all every game. Let's take a look at how the NFC North stacks up heading into the holiday weekend, and it's brought to you by Comerica Bank. The Vikings beat the Packers on a walk-off field goal last Sunday to pull closer to the top, but Green Bay still has a comfortable lead for now. The Bears lost their own heartbreaker to the Ravens last week to fall to 3-7. One good thing about Turkey is that there are usually leftovers after Thanksgiving Day. Another fact that can be labeled good or bad, depending on how you look at it, is that Turkey is responsible for TV dinners. Back in the 1950s, a food services employee ordered 260 excess tons of turkey. They needed something to do with it, so they put the turkeys in an aluminum tray with veggies and they froze it. That is problem solving at its finest. The Lions had a few problems to overcome against Cleveland last Sunday, and they figured out a few of them. Our football analyst Devin Gardner joins us now to show us how they did it. Dev, what do you got for us? The Lions fought the entire game and actually gave themselves a chance, but they still came up short. And though they didn't get their first win of the season, there were some bright spots on both sides of the ball. And I can show you a few of those aforementioned bright spots, and they're brought to you by Fire Law. In short yardage situations, creating a new line of scrimmage is very important. The offensive line has to find a way to move another group of large humans from point A to point B. On this fullback dive to Jason Cabinda, the left side of the line creates a huge cavity for Cabinda to run through. Instead of blocking Miles Garrett, they put him in a situation where he has to worry about the pinch man and that acts as a block. 
with Garrett distracted, Cabinda shows a nice piece of footwork to get the one yard needed, and then some. How about a little full back hurdle for the big fella? For short yardage on defense, the idea is the same. Create a new line of scrimmage. But with that, the edges must be stout. Austin Bryant does an outstanding job setting the edge of the defense and giving Nick Chubb nowhere to go. Everybody else on the defensive line does a great job of winning their personal battles, and the defense gets a short yardage stop on the second highest rated running back from a year ago. On third and 11, the Lions know that Baker Mayfield has to hold the ball to give time for his receivers to get to the first down depth. You know, the funny thing about time is, it's sometimes just not on your side. The Browns have seven guys in protection, which usually is pretty good. But the Lions bring eight. It's simple math. Eight minus seven equals one second to make a decision on where you want to go with the ball before the Lions defense gets home. Great job by defensive coordinator Aaron Glenn having his defense one step ahead. DeAndre Swift had himself another productive day last week. He averaged almost 10 yards per carry on his way to 136 yards on the ground. That average was aided on this big game where he doesn't even get touched. The offensive line does a great job of covering up every defender and Swift is responsible for the first man that has the chance to touch him. And Swift says, may I have this dance? Gets rid of one defender and sprints past the rest for his sole touchdown on the day. Head coach Dan Campbell called plays for the first time this season against a very good Browns defense. And the offense made some plays and gave themselves a chance. But you can't help but think, if Jared Goff is healthy, maybe some of those plays bounce the Lions' way. Let's all hope that Jared Goff can get healthy for the Thursday showdown on Thanksgiving against the Bears. Back to you, Danny. Thanks, Devin. We've got plenty of food here, so I got to know, what's your favorite item at Thanksgiving? Hmm. I do like food. I say deep fried turkey. Of course you would pick something not on this table. You're on your own, sorry Dev. But happy Thanksgiving, my friend. We've just finished the first course here on Lions Game Plan. Still to come, the head coach returns to take a look at who to look out for on that Chicago Bears offense. And Lions linebacker Anthony Pittman explains why he doesn't wait until the holidays to give back to his community. Lions Game Plan is brought to you by Kroger, fresh for everyone. By the Henry Ford Health System, official health care provider of the Detroit Lions. And by Menards, save big money on all your home improvement needs. Welcome back to this Thanksgiving edition of Lions Game Plan. We've already talked about the turkey, so we have to move on to one of the most popular side dishes there is. The stuffing. Everyone seems to have their own recipe for it. In fact, one of the oldest cookbooks ever found, dating back to the first century, has a recipe for stuffing in it. Unfortunately, it has ingredients like chopped liver and chopped brains. No thank you. I'm going to stick to this bread stuffing right here. That Chicago offense has a few ingredients in it as well. And head coach Dan Campbell joins me now to talk which of those players are the most flavorful. His thoughts are brought to you by Comerica Bank. Chicago Bears' offense, uh, they'll look to wide receiver Allen Robinson in those critical plays. Uh, this one here at Pitt, you're going to walk us through. What did that look like down the stretch? This was a heck of a game. Um, look, one score game, two minutes left. Uh, I was watching this um, actually live when it was going on. But here he is in a slot. Look, this is a critical play, man. They need it. And uh, there was a lot of this they'd been playing kind of off um, and – and, but yet playing the sticks, and so they just decided, let's run right by him. And to have the moxie here to make this throw over the top to Allen Robinson, it's a third and two, it's critical, you know, uh, and hit him right in stride. That's a heck of a play. While well, Thanksgiving time is always a great moment to gather around the table with family, it's also a great time to give back to people who are in need. People are always giving of food and money around the holidays. However, linebacker Anthony Pittman did not want to wait for the holidays to give back to his community. 
So, grew up in Detroit, on the west side of Detroit, um, over on Linwood and Davidson. It can be hard growing up in Detroit, um, growing up in poverty, you know. I was fortunate enough for my mom to be able to provide for me, and I feel like I've seen both sides in terms of living in Detroit most of my childhood and then moving out to Birmingham for my high school. I feel like I've seen it all. Once you kind of experience one side of things, and then you, you know, you see what life could be like on the other side. Like, you don't want to, you don't want to go back to how things were on one side. Seeing others, you know, struggling in poverty, it just hurts to see people stuck in a position where they can't get out. I feel like that's no way to live for anyone. I just, I empathize with those people. Um, I don't know, man. It's got to be. There's got to be some way, like, these people can be helped. You know, they, it can't just be, you know, hopeless for these people. Me and my girlfriend decided it was really her idea. You know, she's like, there's something we can do. You know, we would package together about 50 meals. You know, it's just us two. You know, get in our car on a Saturday morning and just drive around asked people if they wanted meals. And I remember, I remember it very clear. This one lady, we drove and we gave her a meal. And she was so surprised that, you know, we offered her food and she was like, oh, this is, this is just what I needed right now. You know, this is exactly what I needed. And, um, you know, I'll never forget that. And, you know, it's just something small that we were able to do, you know, to, to give back. Still to come, Dan Campbell takes a look at the Bears' defense and how the loss of Khalil Mack affects the Lions' plans for Sunday. And up next, fullback Jason Cabinda talks of the honor of playing on Thanksgiving Day and what a win would mean to him. Lions Game Plan is brought to you by Family Heating, Cooling, and Electrical. Family, not just the name of our company, but the way we do business. By Comerica Bank, raise your expectations. And by Michigan's Dairy Farmers, know someone deserving of an advantage? Nominate them for a chance to win a stacked refrigerator at milkmeansmore.org. Welcome back to our Thanksgiving Day Feast. We have moved on to one of the most controversial side dishes on your table, and it's the cranberry sauce. Listen, people either love it or they hate it. There is no middle ground. My bet though, is that most people love it because over 5 million gallons of this jellied cranberry sauce will be consumed on Thanksgiving day. That is enough to fill eight Olympic sized swimming pools. If you're asking me, it's a no for the cranberry sauce. However, fullback Jason Kambinda, he loves playing on Thanksgiving day and he joins me now. His thoughts are brought to you by Comerica Bank. We've got to get to your play on the field here real quick. Super back is kind of what you're calling yourself now. Why? Um, I mean, I'm just doing whatever I'm asked. Um, honestly, I think the coaches are catching on, you know, to my skill set, the things I can do, you know, a wide variety of things, you know, blocking, catching, running, whatever um, really is asked of me. Um, but it, 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 I'm comfortable doing it because... I mean, in high school, really, all I played was offense. And all I really played was running back. So a lot of things I'm doing, it's kind of already natural. It's just coming back to me, really, kind of getting back that that confidence, that high school confidence I had and stuff like that. But, you know, it's my second year on offense, so I'm just trying to grow, continue to develop as a player, you know, all those kinds of things. Yeah, you turned into a super back against the Browns. You catapulted over a Browns defender for a 21-yard <laughs> gain. What did you see on that play that – open the field up for you. I mean, the O-line did a great job on that side. I mean, that whole left side just got crushed down. You know, I was able to see the cut, you know, made a cut to the outside and then, you know, just got up field, got vertical, mm -hmm. got the most I could get. 20, 21 yard gain is, is solid. So hopefully I can build on it. With these bears on the clock, I mean, 
it, it feels winnable. Just with talking with you guys, talking with coaches, it feels super winnable. Like it does every week, though. No doubt. So how do you put a dub in the win column after, especially on Turkey Day? Yeah, I mean, we've, we've been in, you know, the majority of these games, mm -hmm. you know, at the end. It's really about us finishing. Um, you know, we're not the kind of team who can make a ton of mistakes and kind of overcome that. So I think that's the biggest thing is just playing a clean game, you know, doing our job, every guy winning their one-on-one -on -one battles more consistently. Um, I think we'll be in that win column, obviously. And, you know, we have a great opportunity. We're playing on Thanksgiving. I mean, great time to show out for your friends, for your family, everybody watching at home, national television. So, I mean, I'm excited. I mean, this week's going to be really about the team who focuses the most, the team who locks in the most, the team who's the most rested and, and just ready to play and shows up and has the most energy and juice. All right, lastly, I heard you want my job, sports broadcaster. Do you want to just switch seats? Do you just want to ask the questions now? Like, we can do me. that. I mean, we can do that. We might have you call some of your plays here soon. I have no issues with that. I'm, Please I'm get a score it. so <laughs> we can bring you in and uh, you can call it. All right, I got you. Deal? No all right. Doubt. Okay, perfect. <laughs> We're not done yet here on Lions Game Plan. Up next, the Lions offense will hope to feast on the Bears on Thursday. Dan Campbell returns with a look at the Chicago defenders that will make it difficult. When the Lions host the Bears on Thursday, it will be the eighth time they have faced each other on Thanksgiving Day since 1991. Here's a look at the results of the last seven, brought to you by Pepsi. Chicago has won the last two in a row back in 2018 and 19, but the Lions have the edge overall, winning four of those seven meetings. We've come to my favorite part of the Thanksgiving dinner, and that is dessert, which typically means some pumpkin pie is about to be eaten. 19 million of these ready-made pies will be consumed on Thanksgiving Day. If you don't like pumpkin, that is all right. We've got some apple pie on deck, which is served almost just as much. Always good to have some options. That Bears defense has some solid options when it comes to stopping that Lions offense this Thursday. The head coach, Dan Campbell, joins me once again to talk those options, and his thoughts are brought to you by Goodman Acker. In terms of this Chicago Bears defense, what's the first thing that comes to your mind when you got to face them twice now? Yeah, well, it, well, two things. Number one, that rush, all right, between Mack and, and Quinn on the edge, and then Roquan Smith. I think that's the strength of their defense. Those three are their cowbells. Last time, Roquan Smith, is Roquan Smith, a sack, eight tackles, a tackle for a loss. Mm -hmm. How do you contain him and make sure that he's not pressuring you guys man. too much? Well, look, I think, first of all, you get, we got to get a hat on him. we got to understand that, man, we can't let this guy just roam free. we got to be ready to run when he runs and get on top of him, take the right angles. But also, I think we got to do a little, some misdirection, you know, get him moving one way and then bring it back and see if we can pin him in there because he's an active player. He's smart. He's physical. He's smart. He's running hit. He can cover. You know, he's one of these few... Uh, all around linebackers in this league. Mm -hmm. What's he look like on film? Yeah, he looks like this. Uh, here you go. Here's a third and one. This is classic Roquan. All right, now they do a good job of covering him up, right? That's they got their three bigs here and let him roam a little bit, keep people off of him. But you can see how this the back's trying to bait him, but he's not taking it. He's not going down there. They're trying to come off. He pops right around this block, and then here we go, man. He just uses his athletic ability. They're trying to do a read run with Carr and uh, not having it. And, and this stuff happens a lot with this guy. He gets the ball out. All right, Robert Quinn, uh, the 11-year vet, he's going to try to pressure your quarterback. What does your offensive line need to do to, to keep him back? I think Quinn's been a really good rusher in this league for a long time, and I think he's very unique. Mm -hmm. uh, I think he's a little different. He's got enough speed to get off the edge, but he has length, the quick first step, and he's got the ability to run right down your midline at the last minute slip you, which not everybody's able to do. All right, but he does this, he goes, and all of a sudden he just hops right around it, swat, rip, he's on the edge, and here we go. And uh, he's another guy. Look, he's got a lot of sack, he's got a lot of sack fumbles, which he had against us. There's so much that goes into Thanksgiving Day. Your team would have played three games in about 11 days, eight days. Uh, so how much do you just forget about that once you get out on the field for Thanksgiving? Yeah, you do. You do. You know, you there's a certain way you prepare for this game. You know, you have to walk through. You can't go full speed uh, because of the game you just came off of. And, and uh, it's got to be something mentally they can process. So it's really about getting them back emotionally and physically to get ready for the next one. And so you're mindful of that. But when you walk out on the field, you, for, you do. You forget all about that. Now it's, man, it's the next game in front of us, and it's high energy. And uh, you understand everybody's watching. 
So you want to put your best foot forward. You've played in this game before, so how special is that day to Detroit and to you? It is special. Um, you know, I think those are, when you're a kid and you're growing up, you always dream of, uh, shoot, playing in the NFL and then playing on Thanksgiving Day because that's what you see all the time, at least when I was growing up. So uh, it's just special to be able to coach in this game, coach for the Lions, and, uh, and be a part of this. You got to play in that game. Let's, we're throwing it back to 06. Take us through this one, first quarter. Mm, yeah, this was, uh, this was Scat 940 uh, F Arrow is what that was. So, yeah, it was just me and a basic in the backside. Mm -hmm. um, Paul, I can't believe I remember that play call. But that was Kit, and that was a heck of a throw. It just, it, look, it worked out well. Mike Martz, good play design, so. Amazing. I didn't really do much. That ball, there was nobody around, so. The only touchdown of the game, though, against Miami Dolphins. Do you remember who sung the national anthem in that one? I do not. Taylor Swift, man. Really? Yes. Really? That dates you anymore. Yeah, that does. Okay. So there you go. You're prepared to watch the Lions and Bears in the afternoon, and now you know everything there is to know about the food that will be on your dinner table for Thanksgiving. I'm Danny Rogers. Thanks so much for watching the show. I hope you and yours have a great Thanksgiving day. Now do we get to eat all this food? Come on, guys.